I mean, Daniel chapter 4. I'm going to need Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 4, uh, Daniel chapter 4. Verse 10. And it says, we've been talking about Nebuchadnezzar has another dream. This time he tells the dream. He knows what the dream is. And he's been to the world and the world can't help him and Daniel steps in. Now it's Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar. And thus were the visions of my head in my bed. I saw, behold, a tree in the midst of the earth. Now many times in the Bible, men are like in the tree. Trees have family roots. Humans have family roots. There's all different kinds of trees. There's all different kinds of humans. There's a man that was blind and, and partially opened his eyes. He said, I see men as trees walking. So we got a dream of, here of a tree. In Matthew 13, we have a tree which symbolizes the kingdom with all the fowls lodging it. But that's devils. Uh, there was two trees in the garden of, of honor. The tree of knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. There's a tree in New Jerusalem called the tree of life. The olive tree is a symbol of uh, the Holy Spirit. The fig tree is a symbol of self-righteousness. Adam and Eve, when they sinned, they came to God and they, they sold fig leaves. So he says, I see a tree in the midst of the earth. In the center of the earth. Everything's around this tree. And the height thereof was great. And the tree grew. And to the fact is, you wonder, I mean, they start off, they actually grow, or this is, this he's saying that, you know, this tree is grown, and it was strong. And the height thereof reached unto heaven, it's high. And the sight thereof to the end of the earth. So it's a tree that, that brushes out. It's a tree that, it's height and width. The leaves thereof were fair. And the fruit thereof much. So it's a fruitful tree. And the Bible says, Wherefore by their fruits you should know them. And in it was meat for all. And the beasts of the field had shadow under it. So when the sun's out and it's hot, the animals would go underneath this tree and hide it. And the fowls of the heaven dwell in the boughs thereof. Like, Matthew, Matthew 13, where Jesus said, And all flesh was fed of it. This is a marvelous tree. It's got fruit. It's alive. It's tall. It branches out. It takes care of the animals. It takes care of the birds. It, it feeds people. I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, I don't know, you know, if this was two part dream or, 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 in addition to, behold, a watcher, and holy one. I have no idea. I never proclaim I know the whole Bible. I don't know the whole Bible. Came down from heaven, so somebody in heaven. He's a watcher. He's a holy one. And he's sure not Saint Nick. <laughs> you better watch out. You better not, pal. Because that guy's a lie. Saint Inclaus is not coming. I mean, with all technology today and everybody's smartphone, where are the pictures of Santa and his sleigh? They ain't got it. Nor red. We're going to tell you where Santa Claus is. I laugh. If Noraz is watching Santa Claus and our enemy bombs the fire out of us. Never know. Sally, you're quite mean. I just you go for lies. I saw in the vision a watcher and a holy one. 
Now, it could have been a watcher who is a holy one, and with, as in Titus 2.13, God and our blessed Lord Jesus Christ, they're one. Though many religions say, well, you know, it's God and there's Jesus. you got to watch that and. And he cried aloud, probably one, and said thus. You notice how a lot of the angels, especially in the book of Revelation, they got they cry aloud. Now Satan has the imitation for people who cry aloud. That man that was in the tombs who lived among the dead, he cried aloud. But God's people cry aloud. I had many, many, many times in my ministry, you're too loud, you're too loud. Okay, thank you very much. I fits one of the best. Raise up your voice like a trumpet and declare to my people that my sins, iniquity. So he cried aloud and said thus, hew down the tree, cut it down, cut off its branches. So cut the tree down, trim the branches, shake off his leaves, scatter his fruit, let the beast get away from under it, and the fowls from under his branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of the roots in the earth. So don't get rid of the stump completely. Leave the stump. Even with a band of iron. Now, iron shows up a lot in Daniel, and iron does not have a good con good conduct in the Bible. We've got iron that mixes with miry clay, the, the image of the first dream. We're going to come up across with a beast with iron teeth. Iron and brass shows up in the line of Cain, the murderer, who's been marked a refuge from God. Brass is judgment. In the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven. And let his portion be with the beast in the grass of the earth. So cut this tree down, trim it, cut it up, and just let it be out in the field. Lay it out in the field. Let his heart. All right, this. I don't think trees have a heart. Be changed from a man's. Okay, now this tree is likened a type of a man. And this is probably where Nebuchadnezzar is like, what's going on here? And let a beast heart be given unto him. And let seven times pass over him. Now, we don't know that seven times. It's, it's got to be months or years. Because by the description of this man, we'll read and we'll get as we get closer and closer. But the description of this man is not seven days. It's not seven weeks. Process a time of seven months and maybe seven years. This matter is by the decree, a law, a writing of the watchers. Now plural. Because <clears throat> it's kind of interesting because when we come back up here, uh, he says in verse 14, uh, 13, a watcher. Verse 17, watchers. And the Bible says in Hebrews, whereby he entertain angels unawares. There were two angels that went into Sodom and Gomorrah and reported to God, hey, yeah, this city is wicked. But again, I'm going to tell you, I don't know. That's the safest conclusion. I don't know. And the demand by the word of the Holy One. Again, is that watchers and holy ones one? To the intent that the living may know that the Most High God rules in the kingdom of men. 
and he gives it all the Republicans to do the Republican thing and make all every Baptist happy and just wet their pants. How come a heathen king who the Holy Spirit's working on says, give it to whomsoever he will? Oh, he stole my vote. He stole the vote. He's not my president. Nebuchadnezzar said, yes, he is. God put him in office. We vote. No, no, no. You don't do nothing. Because God can easily throw votes in the garbage. There were votes in the garbage. Yes, there were. Probably was. Just as much as, as that, that, that TV evangelist that throws the, pe the, the prayers into the dumpster and keeps the checks. Yes. You're not going to override God and who you want to rule the world or a government. God and Satan has got it all together. And God, if it's Satan, God will say, okay, go ahead and do it. And God will say to Satan, no, I'm not going to allow that. But I'll tell you one thing about the leader of a nation. God will give a leader to the nation that matches that leader. So you better watch what you say about the president or about the governor or whoever, because that is the characteristic of who and what you are. Well, we got a Catholic. So are the Baptist Catholics. And set it up over a basis of men. Now that basis means they're they're worthless, they're low. They're not much, they're vile. You care to look at the government, you care to look at who's been the rulers of these of, of the world empires? Have you ever noticed that the fact is look at God's leaders? I mean, who actually really was Paul? Who really was Peter and James and John and, and Andrew? They were just fishermen. Who really was Moses? He was a murderer. He was adopted son of the queen of, of Egypt. He wasn't even the son. He was adopted. He, he was put into the family because she found him by the river. Who exactly was Elijah? He just, boom, here's Elijah. Where'd you come from? Who, who was really Abraham? Abraham came out of the moon city. The same moon is worshipped by Islam today. They don't go the way of Isaac, they go the way of Ishmael. Who are God called preachers? Now there are preachers, oh great fame, great wonders, and great schools and all that. Yeah, but what, where do they go and what do they do compared to, who's this nobody? Yeah, that's, that's who God uses. He uses nobody. And it's God that puts them into whatever office you want to call it. Whether it be a president, whether he be a czar, whether he be the queen, or the king, or prime minister, whoever it is. Daniel 4.17, the, the heathen king Nebuchadnezzar says, it is God. And even if it's of Satan, well, you know, this man's of Satan. Satan had to get God's permission. And Satan has that power because he said to Jesus, if you fall down and worship me, I'll give you all this wrong. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, had seen. Now thou, O Belshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof. There, there's an order. The king's saying, do it. For as much as all the wise men of my king are not able to make known unto me an interpretation. But thou art able for the Spirit, the Holy God. Now, how many times does that come up? Verily, 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 verily. The Holy Spirit's in you. Now, he has not kind of recognized God as who God is, but he's recognized who God is. You say, well, I don't understand. You haven't been soul winning. You haven't dealt with people in religion. You see that they, they're, they're churning, but then they go back. I know a man that was saved, 
He's in the Catholic Church, and the Catholic Church had such a tight on him. He kept running back to the church until finally God gave him the victory. Then Daniel, whose name is Belshazzar, was a stone. He was a stone. He was for one hour. Revelation said, in the midst of one hour, there's silence in heaven. And his thoughts troubled him. Now, was it that there was no insight of this interpretation? I, I've had that. Come on, God, answer me. Come on, come on, God, answer, God, answer, God. Or was it to the fact is that the dream is being interpreted to Daniel? Like, whoa, you want me to say that to him? That guy's already th thrown three of us in the, in the fiery furnace. And the king spake and said, Belsai, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. All right, now Nebuchadnezzar is giving Daniel a, a, a blank check. Wherever it is, tell me. That's what Eli did to the little boy Samuel. Eli knew what God had already told him. And, and Samuel speaks to God in the middle of the night. And he gets up in the morning, opens up the temple. And Eli speaks up to him and says, tell me what, what God said to you last night. And don't hold back a word. Or curse it be you. All right, that's a blank check. You want to know the whole thing? I'll tell you the whole thing. And Belsizer, let not the dream interpret they trouble thee. Belsizer answered and said, My Lord, the dream be to them that hate thee. That's the way to so so what's this dream about? It's the people that hate thee. What did the dream have? To, here's a tree. It's grown up. Only besides the watchers or the holy ones, there's no one else in that dream. Everybody's resting in that dream, and Daniel says, that hate thee. And the interpretation thereof to thy enemy. Because that's going to be remarkable. That's, that's an important statement to what we will look at. In the miracle of all this was this dream that comes to be. So the tree is Nebuchadnezzar. Here's this great, big, healthy, bright tree with fruit and everything. Man, can you just see his head blowing up? Like the head of gold and the great. That's you. That's Babylon. And what we're going to look at is we're just chapters. We're going to look at pride as a sin. This great, healthy tree that gets cut down, it's you, Nebuchadnezzar. Like, you just see his face, oh, except for the cut. I mean, you know he's not thinking about the cutting down. I think, wow, that tree is great, beautiful, nice lead, good fruit. Everybody's resting in my and I'm the leader of the beast. I'm the king of the beast. You say, no, that's the downfall of Nebuchadnezzar. We will learn by the end of this chapter. I am the great. That actually, one of the, I forget how many, ten wonders, how many wonders of the world there is, I forget, I don't care. One of them is the hanging gardens of Babylon. Of the money and time and effort that was put into that garden for his wife. I'll tell you one thing, you, know, you say everything about Babylon, that guy really must have loved his wife to put all that work and that effort and that, and that time into that garden that it is one of the seven wonders of the world today. Now here's this tree. It ain't just no tree, it's... I never realized, that. And said, I don't, I've heard that if we dream in color, I don't, I don't remember ever memorize my dreams if they do or not. I try to dream and see if it was color. I don't, but if it, if it is color, and I don't know, that would add more realm to this tree.
But we have a tree of life that has fruit and leaves. And we have the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that has fruit and sin. So, the tree that thou sawest, which grew, was strong. Well, he said that you never, 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 it grew. Look how great I am. How great I am. I am strong, military, my, who, who does that sound like? Does that not sound like America? And I ain't just talking about the, I'm talking about American, and I'm talking about Baptist America. How great. We got a wonderful, great church. We got, this is the house of God Sunday morning. Welcome to the house of God. Like there's no other houses of God. We're the greatest. I'm proud to be American. Everything we make, you got to get a recall. Stars and stripes. Stars and stripes are the angels and the stripes that Jesus Christ took for our sins and our iniquities. And was strong. Now remember, he's talking to Nebuchadnezzar, whose height reached under the heaven. Uh, you, you can just see his head going up to the heavens. And the sight there up to all the earth. Look at all the earth looking at Babylon. I mean, if you go look online at the glory of this city in the walls... And how thick those walls were. They were having chariot races up on top of those walls. And yet a little sewer pot. The Medes and Persians will come through. Whose leaves were fair. And the fruit thereof much. Not a fruit would be nations and agriculture and meat and gold and you know what fruit is for a Christian souls and it was the meat for all so there's the meat there's, there's your not just beef and pork but you know vegetables fruits and vegetables that's a description of the Antichrist that in the tribulation period, the only way you're going to get that meat and get that fruit and vegetables and get what you need in health care, you're going to have to receive that mark. That was pictured in, in Joseph's time with, with uh, Egypt. All the world had to have bread. You had to go to Egypt to get that bread. You couldn't go nowhere else. which the beasts of the field dwell. You know, there's all kinds of nations in Babylon. We already know there are Jewish Judeans in Babylon. Do you know a nation that has fruit and meat and all kinds of people dwell in her, in her land? Whose branches, the fowls of the heaven and their habitation. It is thou, O king, thou art grown and become strong. I mean, look around. Look at everything. Look what has been built. Nebuchadnezzar will go and destroy the temple in Judah, in Jerusalem, and Egypt. And reaches to heaven. And that would be the status of the city has reached to the physical heaven. As when God was Solomon and Gomorrah, he came with the angels and he said, we've got to find out what's going on here. And then we look back to the Tower of Babel when they start doing this, make break. And God said to himself with the Trinity, let us go down there and see. So the nobility of Babylon has reached up to God and has called to God's attention that 
All right, you two come over here, or you one come over here. Go down there, find out what's going on. And my question is, has it or will, not if it will happen, if it hasn't happened yet, when will ha that guy will say, all right, go down to America and find out if it's true. Like I said. Go down there and find out if those Baptist churches are really Baptist Catholic churches, like that man says. Find out if that man down there is talking to a bunch of Christians that they got a perverted Bible, but they don't want to listen. Find out if that preacher says, as far as Esther and Tamu, if well, I'm going to, we're going to do what we want to do. Find out if that's true. Whoa, wait till those angels report back. That won't happen. How many men are Daniel? Where's Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo? Now they're gone. I believe I have one man in this area, and I have been sent to these churches saying, you're doing wrong. Okay, I can't force you. And I've had two churches, you know, hey, you know, we're going to do what we want to do as far as this Christmas. And, okay, fine. And then we got perverted by it. Okay, fine. And the leaders of the church and, and the teachers, they weren't, Lord God, you see what they're doing in this room. And there are sheep there in those congregations. They, they don't know what they have in their laps. But we got a great big tree. We got a great church. We got a great pastor. But don't you speak ill of our BBS. You can go. And dominion to the end of the earth. Babylon is stretched out. Whereas the king, Nebuchadnezzar, saw a watcher and a holy one come down from heaven. I don't know if they're one and one or two. But there are watchers in heaven. Now he knows what a king, what an angel is. He knows the difference between an angel. He said angel before. Saying, hew down, hew the tree down. That's Nebuchadnezzar. Cut it down. Now can you imagine the terror in his eyes now? But there is no terror. See, what are you talking about? He's got pride. He's got, he ain't listening to the message. And we'll see that by, at the end of this chapter. You tell America, God's judgment, there's a hell. And if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to die. You're going to hell. And God's going to judge us. God's going to send COVID. God's going to send volcanoes. He's going to send fires. He's going to send earthquakes. He's going to send a, a, a hurricane. He's going to send whatever he can because he's long-suffering. He wants you to repent. America's going to fall. Oh, not us. And I am giving you scripture. I am telling you what the Bible says. And I'm telling you, if, if America does not fall by her pride, God's going to have to say, Nebuchadnezzar, come here. Yes, Lord God. I punish you for being proud and arrogant. Yes, sir. Daniel chapter 4. Don't press it. Sorry, sir. That nation down there in America, I, I let it survive. And I gave, I, we had New Jerusalem. We had the New Heavens and New Earth. And you see over there, we got the New America. Well, what are you saying, Lord? I got to apologize to you. What? See, I judge you for your pride, but I didn't judge him. I gave America all her benefits and everything. I God blessed America. All you Sodomites and, and Gomorrahmites and come on up here. I gotta apologize to you all you Sodomites. You see, I let America go about in her sins of sodomy in a gay and lesbian community. I let them go. I let them do whatever they wanted to do because they marched in the streets and they had pride and I love them. 
So inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah, I apologize for you because I judged you and I didn't judge America. Pharaoh? I'm trying to get that one there. Herod? Come here. You guys smell like sulfur. We've been in hell, Lord. I gotta apologize to you. What for? You see, America, I allowed them to kill their babies. I allowed them. They, they made a law, they can do it. I allowed them. The new heavens, new earth, new Jerusalem, and the new America. I gotta apologize to you because, because Pharaoh, when they when, as soon as soon they came in their mother's womb, if it was a boy, you killed them. Herod? Two years and younger, you killed them. And I judge you, sent you guys to hell. America's not going to get away with her sins. And the men and nations that I just mentioned are a proven biblical fact. They're not going to do it. God will judge them. Hew the tree down. Destroy it. That's amazing. Look what it said. Destroy it. Leave the stump of the roots there up in the air. Destroy it, but leave that stump. That's the hardest part to get rid of a tree. Leave the roots in the air. Even with a band of iron brass. Keep that. that and what that, what that does, that keeps the stump uniform. It doesn't allow it to rot. In the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven. And let his portion be with the beasts of the field. It's going to be out in the forest. Seven times Passover, and we don't know that it's seven weeks, seven months, or seven years. Which has come upon the Lord the King. That they should drive thee from men. And thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. And they shall make thee to eat grass as an ox. The guy's going to be out in the grass. He's going to be your human lawnmower. Oxen was a animal that was for sacrifice. Oxen is your tractor that people use today to plow the field. Oxen, Paul uses as a type of a pastor. And it's funny because he says, eat grass as oxen, plural, doesn't say as an ox. They shall wet thee with the dew of heaven. Who is the day? Dew rises up in the morning with some kind of moisture. I, I don't understand it, but you go out early in the morning, you'll see dew in the grass. Daniel says, they shall wet dew the dew of the heaven. Seven times Passover, they, we don't know again. The, Till thou know that the Most High God, capital H, I wonder what the modern Bibles do with that, those ages. Rule within the kingdom of men. Oh, he's not our president, but God's reigning. God's in charge. God wouldn't be in charge to do what he's doing. Yes, he is. And that man's going to have to be held account for everything he does, Romans 13. Oh, he's a wicked sinner. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. What are you, Jesus? You're the only one that doesn't sin? Listen, like I said, I put to God these modern Bibles and, and these things are going on. And I say, Lord, well, you know what? I sinned on this last night. I'm, I, I may not sin their sins, but I got my sins. Even if, if you know, they say, not my president, and I, I heard chance, and I've seen flags with, with, with an F-bomb and 
You're going to stand before God and have to give an account. Now, I'll tell you right now that the biggest pride of all the pride of the presidents is your God, small G-O-D, Trump. Trump is pride. And God will deal with pride. And if he doesn't deal with that pride, judgment will come. Nebuchadnezzar is in pride. And judgment will come. Before we close out the Bible. For this chapter. And give it to whosoever he will. Again, there's that. There's barely, barely. Whoever the leader is, Mary, Bloody Mary, was put into her reign by God. But she killed, all, yeah, that's right. Just as much God put Nero. God put a man named Saul in charge as he went and, and tortured and persecuted the church. Saul put Herod and Pharaoh in charge as they killed children. Romans 13. They will give an account for their sins as much as I will give an account for my sin. And my conduct as a Christian. And whereas they commanded to leave a stump of the tree root. Thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. That's a miracle. You say, what's the miracle of that? That's a miracle that Westcart, your modern Bible father, doesn't believe. He said, what are you talking about? King Nebuchadnezzar, whether it be seven weeks, seven months, or seven years, is going to be away from his kingdom. He's going to be a beast. He's going to have beast-like He's going to be your Bigfoot. He's going to eat grass. He's not going to be on the throne. And yet while he's away from that throne, no one takes over Babylon. When he comes to his senses, that throne is there for him and I got to see. One of those things won't come out. It's called a tickle. <coughs> there it is. Usually followed by two. Merit, one of the miracles here is that kingdom is not overthrown while Nebuchadnezzar is out being humbled by God. Pride is a sin. After that, thou shalt have thou shalt have known that the heaven do rule. What's God going to do with these Christians and Americans to think one day, you know what? I guess he is my president. Or will they go into their grave rebellion? And facing God, whether it's saved, the judgment seat of Christ, or lost the, the great white throne judge, facing God is, that was rebellion. Oh, it was Christ, you know, I was, no it wasn't. That was just sincere rebellion. What about my reward? You lost them. I don't, re I don't reward rebellion. But he was, I don't care what. Read Romans, go into the classroom and write on the chalkboard Romans 13 20 times. And when you're done, come see me. Wouldn't that be interesting? Give me the scriptures where Peter, James, John, Paul, Jude, Matthew, Mark, Luke, 
Show me a scripture where they retaliated and, and cursed and, and complained about the government that was under them. Explain to me why Paul can write in one of his letters, those of Caesar's households reach you. Explain to me why the ruler told Paul that almost per se to me to be a Christian. And that your ass nine, and I use the word properly, ass nine. If you don't like the word ass nine, I don't care. Your ass nine attitude towards the President of the United States you think that guy is ever going to believe in God, the true Jesus Christ of the Bible, when you Christians act like you do? You think you are a good testimony for him to be, oh, I don't care, no, okay then. That's a rebellious attitude. And God is in charge no matter who is in authority. Oh, he's not right. He does it. Yeah, okay, that's fine. And tell me how perfect you are. I'll tell you what. You, you on the next election, let's see your name on the on the ballot box, and we'll put you in the office, and we'll see how well you do. Oh, you know, maybe. <laughs> Maybe God put you in, put in the office and say, hey, you think it's so easy? Here you go. Here's the job. Do it. Come on. You said you, you complained. You grew right. I'm in charge of all, right? I'm going to put you in that office. I'm going to put you in that position. Okay, now you do the great job. You do the wonderful, great, sinless job that you, you, know, you do it. Go ahead. Where Paul writes to Timothy... That we're to pray for our rulers. That is the will of God. Prayer and supplication. The Bible says Daniel prayed three times a, three times a day. Well, I guarantee his prayers also included the king. Also included the sorcerers, the magicians, and the astrologers, and the Chaldeans. How would he get in the position that God has put him in in Daniel chapter 4 if he didn't pray to God and he didn't pray right? And he had a good conduct between him and Nebuchadnezzar. Yes, sir. No, sir. I ain't going to call no. Mm -hmm. And you ain't going to get nowhere. This man, Daniel, is in the throne room of Nebuchadnezzar. Esther tells us that her husband, her husband, the king, said, if you don't hold out that golden scepter to me, I'm going to lose my neck. That's his wife. And Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo were not in the throne room. They were in an offshoot of a throne at that furnace. I guarantee that furnace of fire was not in the throne room of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar is in his throne. He's sitting there, and there is Daniel, a Jew, speaking the way he is. You know what any ruler would have done with Daniel? All right, take him away and chop off his neck and say amen. And yet God, here's another miracle, shows Daniel mercy and grace that the king is not going to listen, but then he's going to listen. Yeah, I don't, we'll get to it by the end of the chapter. But you better get one thing straight in America today if you hear anything about this message. Do you know the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and give it to whosoever he will, 2022, that you may know that the heavens do rule. That heavens. See that plural? The Most High, that's God. Those heavens, that's the powers and principalities of Satan who rules the world. Matthew 4, and I believe Luke chapter 4. So the powers that be, we just saw in Daniel 4.25 and 4.26, is God working and Satan working. One day, one of these days, Satan's going to go up to God, Job 1, Job 2. I think I'm ready for the Antichrist to come. And God's going to say, 
You look at his watch. Not yet. Oh, come on, God. No, no. And then that was going to go. Are we ready for this Antichrist yet? Yep. Now put him in office. Thank you. Bye. You know how quick Satan left the throne? When, all right, go get him. I guarantee that there, there was a fire of brimstone from, from that throne of God to him to Job's residence. I'm out of here. We, we need to realize the rulers are working by God and by devil. I don't like it. Uh, taxes are what? It took taxes to bring Mary and Joseph to the city where Jesus was to be born. God used the leader of Rome and he used taxation. No more new taxes. We're going to throw the tea in the ocean or wherever. Rebellion. You know, even the founder fathers said during the, during the Revolutionary War, if we lose this battle with England, we will be all hung by our necks because we will be declared as outlaws, as rebellions against the throne. We won the war, but in the eyes of God, we are still in rebellion. I mean, we had the rebel flag. And I see Christians, you know, boldly standing for the rebel flag. Wait a minute. You realize that rebellion first shows up in Revelation 13? Revelation 13, 13, and the men of Sodom are wicked sinners. The first time rebellion actually shows uh, 13 actually shows up in the Bible, it's a world war in Genesis. If there's anything you're going to get, get the government. It's not by you, the man. It's by God the Father and Satan. I, I don't vote for one reason. I, I, I don't want to lose a reward. You say, what do you mean? Lord, what's that? What's that ashes there? Well, you voted for that party, and I was against that party. The last man I ever voted for was Bush. I'll tell you why I don't vote no more. President Bush went over and attacked Israel for fuel, for oil. I said, that's it. I took part because I said vote for that man, put that man in office. I had part of attacking Israel. And I may say, I want that man in office. God may say, I don't want him in office. So I would be disagreeing with God. That's not a good. All right. And whereas they commanded thee to leave the stump of the tree to roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. But no one's going to come in and usurp the authority. After that, that shall be known in the heavens do rule. Wherefore, O king, now watch this. Now you know Daniel had to have respect for the king to be saying what he's going to say next. Let my counsel be accepted unto thee. What I just told you. Break off thy sins by righteousness. You know what Daniel just told the king of all Babylon that killed his family? And made him a eunuch and his friends. You know what he told him? You better turn or burn, brother. You better repent or perish. Because you're a sinner. You know who else said that? You know who else said that to a ruler? Nathan walked up to David and said, Thou art the man. And do you know after a chance, Nebuchadnezzar was going to repent? And you know that David repented? Wouldn't it be great if you walked up to the president, you had opportunity by God to say, Sir, no respect, I honor your, your position that, you, that you're in. I just like to tell you, you know, you're a sinner. Your church is wicked. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, what do you say? I, like, I would like to do that. <laughs> do you know how many Christians would get upset if the president got saved? Do you know how many Christians in America would get upset if the president of the United States would, would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and go to heaven? I'm not going to heaven where he's going. 
I'll go where Donald Trump will. Ooh. I doubt that boy's going to heaven. He said, Jesus. I know in Puerto Rican, I work with, always mentioned Jesus as a cuss. And I don't believe he's in heaven. Wherefore, O king, let thy counsel be accepted in the day. Break off thy... Now, he doesn't... Look how respectful he says to repent, king. And thy iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Oh, boy. Danny wants him to be a Democrat. I didn't say that. So evidently one of the sins of, of Nebuchadnezzar is he's prideful and he's not taking care of the poor. If it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. King, you want peace. Peace like a river. You better churn or burn and repent and perish. And you better treat those people a little better. That's in the message. Now we're going to pick up next time. We're going to pick up a year later. From, from what we just mentioned here. A year later. God didn't send the lightning down right away. No, he don't. And he didn't do it to destroy Nebuchadnezzar. He did it because God is long-suffering. Maybe God has the ruler, the leadership that he has today. Maybe he has a divine purpose for all of us. I don't know. Or maybe Satan's just working about to do what he needs. And even if it's Satan, resist the devil. Don't resist the government. 